Welcome back, everybody. Today's subject is the Jaguar II of the West German Army, and I'm going to paint it up in a standardized NATO camouflage. I chose the NATO camouflage because I believe that all of these vehicles that were created were painted that way. They were an upgrade between 1983 and 1985 from the original Cannon Yog Panzers. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. And so because it was such a late conversion in the mid 80s, that is when they were painting everything NATO three-tone camouflage uh, in their arsenal. And so it just made sense that everything that they were upgrading, including the Jaguar II, would be painted the same way. Now to make this easy, I purchased the Ammo of MIG NATO color set. It's got the NATO black, NATO brown, NATO green in it, and it's fairly straightforward. It makes the process pretty simple. Now you can see my steps here. I don't have to go through them with you, but basically I'm gonna do my prime, do a uh, base color, and I'm going to then do some highlighting, throw down my camouflage, and I'm going to then pick out the details, pin wash it, and essentially I am done. I'm looking for something that's gonna pop on the game table, but not take a ton of time. At this point, I have the model primed, and I decided here to glue the tow missile launcher into it so that I can just paint it with the vehicle. Sometimes that kind of detail I'll, I'll have outside of it, but in this case, I glued it in. So here, I'm gonna do some pre-shading. So I'm just gonna take a black paint, doesn't matter what black paint it is, just some kind of black paint, put it in my airbrush, and I am going to airbrush all of the cracks and crevices that I want to turn out to be shaded in the final base coat, when I do the base coat. And you'll see that here a little bit later in the video. But the real key here is to create some depth and some shadow before I put on the base color. And that will really help and go a long way into making the model look better. The, the color dynamics will really turn out to be pretty nice. So here you can see I'm hitting the side armor plates. I'm going to outline a lot of the edges, any deep recesses, which will be around any of the hatches, um, behind the smoke dischargers, any lines that there are here, I'm going to do what I call pre-shading. And I'm going to jump forward in the video here in a quick second so I can show you uh, how it turns out. All right, fast forwarded here, you can see that I have a lot of the lines and areas done and pre-shaded. You'll see how this works with the base coat when I get to that step, but there's a lot of pre-shading here. And I do take my time and make sure I hit all the pre-shaded areas. You'll get a handle for this the more you do this. And anymore, I do appreciate on almost every single model that I do. Now it's time for the base coat. And I've taken that NATO green out of the set and I've put it into my airbrush. I thinned it down some, but I didn't do anything else. So this is the straight base color that I'm gonna airbrush over the model. When I do that, I don't completely soak the model with color. I take my time and I do some light coats of the green over the pre-shading. I do this so some of that black will show through and it will show to this blackish green and it will look shaded. And as you watch me apply it here, you can see that I'm, I'm doing it very gently and I'll go over the whole model pretty lightly and then come back and spray again so that I can build up some color where I want it to be and I can leave some of the shadows there, subtle shadows, in the overall base color. And I'm gonna fast forward here again so I can show you how it turned out. Okay, here I'm almost done with the base coat and you can see hopefully that the entire thing's green and some of that dark shadow is showing through, or at least blending through with the green, giving it some extra depth. Next, I'm gonna start doing some highlights. 
at this point, I add a little yellow into the NATO green. And this will have the effect of highlighting it some so that I can pick out some of the highlight areas on the vehicle itself. Now the color isn't so different from the base color that I will have a dramatic change in color, just subtle enough to give some of the panels some lightness. This is designed to add some more volume and depth to the model. I'm picking out a lot of space here with this particular color, but I'm leaving anywhere where the dark lines are um, to give it that depth and I just want to highlight some of the panels. Okay, I've jumped forward to the end of my painting process and hopefully if you look at the back deck especially here, you can see the lighter color and you can see some of the lighter colors going on the top. I do it in thin coats. I do several and I go back over the model several times till it start looking the way that I want it. In this next step, I added even more yellow to the base color to make it brighter. And then I hit the uppermost or most exposed panels of the vehicle. This gives me kind of a final highlight, but leaves all the depth, all the shadow, and all the other colors are there. Be careful just to hit certain flat panels or the panels that would be the brightest. Here's the model after the highlight step. It's a little hard to tell where the bright highlights are, but it turned out pretty well. Now it's time for the first part of the camouflage. I printed off a reference sheet from the internet of some pictures I found of the Jaguar II so that I could mimic the camouflage pattern. Of course, this is the NATO pattern, so it's green, black, and brown. I started doing the black first. It covered more than the brown did and I thought it would give me a good base. So I intently stared at my source material and very carefully freehanded some black lines on the model itself. And this would serve as the base. The black would anchor where the brown would go and how it would look. So I just took a stab at it and um, got it going. So again, fast forward here, and I'm almost done with the black part of the camouflage. But I have to say, it took a little bit. I was nervous to do it. I'm always nervous to do the camouflage because I think I'm going to mess it up somehow. But when I'm done, I'm really happy with it. And I would say to anybody doing this is if it doesn't look great, don't stop keep going because I thought that this didn't really come into its own until I added the brown. And then all of a sudden it, it looked much better. It popped. It, it really was nice. So stick with it. Now it's time for the NATO Brown. And this is pretty straightforward. I used NATO Brown straight from the paint jar, thinned it a little bit. And then using my reference photos, I put in the brown where it goes. It was a lot easier to do than the black because the black automatically tells you where the brown goes. The black, of course, had nothing really except I counted where the tracks were or where the wheels were when I put it in. The black, though, fills in based on where the black is. I'm assuming this is pretty standard for all NATO camo since NATO camo is all kind of the same. This is the technique I'll use going forward to print any NATO camo. Now the brown's done, and this is the part of the model where I start feeling pretty good about it, and I really like how this turned out. On to the detail work. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I always like to paint any kind of details that I can that are different colors than the base vehicle. So even if the tools on a particular vehicle were painted the same camo color, painted over, I like to pick them out in browns or grays or a different kind of color. And that's because these vehicles are so generic, green, brown, 
if left to its own devices, they look pretty boring. But all the things you can pick out, all the details, make it pop, right? So the tools, the tool handles. In this case, we have an entire tow launching system that can be painted separate. There are um, lots of little details on this particular model, including the caps that go on the front of the smoke dischargers. That can be a different color. Anything that you can think of that's a little bit different color will really make your model stand out. Again, I fast forward to the end here so that we can see the result. And hopefully you can see the, I mean, obviously the tools on the back and on the side, you can see the white missile, the tow missile in the launcher. I'm picking out a couple of things here and there, but overall you can see how the uh, other colors really add to the vehicle itself, really make it stand out. It really catches people's eyes on the game table. Now it's time for the pin wash. You can see that the vehicle here is really glossy. That's because I cover it in a gloss coat before I do the pin wash. I didn't show me spraying the tank, but basically you just take a gloss coat and seal all the work that you've done. That's to protect it from the enamel I'm about to put on. So pin washing is straightforward. I take a, an enamel color made for pin washing and I load a bright paintbrush up and I just touch it anywhere I think it needs highlighting the detail. And so that's any cracks, crevices, any piece that has any kind of depth to it. Uh, around hatches, all the little circles on the side of the vehicle that hold the applique armor, uh, the tow launcher itself, the engine grill, decks, everything you can do. This really, really makes the vehicle stand out by giving it depth really shows you all the details. And you'll see here in a second when I'm done what it looks like. Pin washing takes a little bit to do and it demands some patience, which I rarely have, but I, I really bear down and focus on it because it makes the vehicle look really sharp when I'm done. And if you're a little messy, if the pin wash gets places you don't want it to be, that's totally fine because in the next, next step, we're going to wipe away any of the excess. And to do that, when you're done pin washing, and I'm almost done here, um, you will let it sit. I usually let it sit for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. You want a lot of that moisture to evaporate off of the vehicle so that when you wipe it down, it's fairly dry and that extra enamel will come right off. Now it's time for the second to last step. Take a soft bristle brush. Usually I use a little bit of a wide one. You don't want one with just a point. And I put it in just a little bit of enamel thinner and then I wipe away any excess pin wash that I left on the model where I didn't want it. It's pretty fun to do at this point because the pin washing's done, the hard work's all finished, and all you're doing is kind of cleaning up and wiping away any of the little things that you don't want. It really is fun to do. It's kind of a, a nice end of the, the process to do. And this is really the last step before you put a matte varnish on it and you're done. Now for the last step, I use some ultra matte varnish and I spray the entire model. I may go a little heavier than I probably should, but I know that this piece is gonna be gamed with. A lot of people are gonna pick it up off the table. This is meant to be played with. And so I want it protected. And so I put quite a few coats of ultra matte varnish on it. Plus I like that matte, matte finish. I like that flat look. I don't like any glossiness at all on my particular model. So I really probably spray too much, but it works out in the end. And so this is the last stage and I am done. Model's all finished. Here's a picture of it completely done. I took this picture right after the matte uh, varnish dried. So there is no steps that I missed here. I didn't do anything extra. I just put it down and took some pictures. I thought it turned out pretty nice. 
I'm definitely going to be proud to put this on the table, put this into a 28 millimeter Cold War skirmish game. Of course, I've got to finish painting up my West Germans, but I'm working that uh, as we speak. So hopefully I'll have some videos of painting those and perhaps some skirmish gaming. Thanks for watching. If you don't mind, like the channel, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment if you'd like to. Thanks again.